Yo, what's good? This is Chef David Olson with Live Fire Republic, and we've landed here in the southernmost region of Missouri on the border of Arkansas. And today, we're at Peace Valley Poultry Farms, an organic, open air, pasture raised turkey farm. And today, we're meeting with farmer Isaiah, who's going to help us both pick out and harvest our very own bird. Later on this evening, we're cooking the ultimate Thanksgiving feast over live fire. I promise you don't want to miss this. Let's go. All right, so out here at Peace Valley Poultry, there's about 116 acres. And to me, this is, this is how turkey should be raised, right? It's open oh, yeah. air. Uh, they're eating out here in the pasture. It's incredibly beautiful, but this is almost the antithesis of what people imagine when they think about turkey farming, right? Yeah, I guess it depends on who you talk to. I mean, there's turkey confinement houses out there, and the beauty of this is that they're out the way God intended them. That's right. They're on grass, they get to walk and exercise, they get fresh air, they get bugs galore. It's a really healthy system in my opinion. Well, and the USDA has changed things in a way where open air could literally mean that a turkey's in a confinement house and they have access to a door that allows them in a caged area to breathe uh, natural air without the ammonia from sediment that might be building up inside of the confinement house. They have access to a gentle breeze. That's not open air. This is open air. This is beautiful. But man, you're right out here. You're in uh, Missouri. The pasture is beautiful. And these are white-breasted turkey, right? Broad-breasted white, yes sir. Broad-breasted white turkey. So what makes this turkey special or what makes this unique? Well, this is the same sort of turkey that is used in the commercial turkey industry. What we're doing is we're taking them out of the confinement house and putting them onto the pasture. It's beautiful. It's incredible. Well, here's what we're doing today. We're going to take a little bit of tour. I look forward to learning about the turkeys, but we have it. Uh, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Yes, sir. So we're going to grab a couple turkeys today, uh, and then we're going to get back to our cook. Uh, we're just near Poplar Bluff, so we have a little bit of drive here from the farm. So we're going to grab a couple turkeys. Uh, and then we're cooking tonight over the fire. Um, so if you're able to make it, we'd love to have you Okay, on. okay, uh, all right. But we have an incredible cook. We have a lot of family and friends back there and uh, I think we have a great night ahead. So um, let's, uh, let's get on, let's check it out, man. And then uh, we'll grab some turkeys and we'll head home to a cook. Okay. Wow, it's incredible. I hate to do this because they're such nice animals, but we got to eat, you know? That's too good. Hey, there you go. One hand under the breast. There you go. Oh. Oh. Wow. That is beautiful. Look at him. I'm one for five. Is that a bad ratio? Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful bird. It's really incredible when you hold the bird in your hands. It gives you a new sense of appreciation for what it is they do here at the farm and for this animal. And it's important for people to know the turkey's not just something you buy in the grocery store in a plastic package in styrofoam. This is a real animal, and it takes incredible work for what Isaac does out here at the farm. It gives you a new sense of appreciation and respect for what goes into your Thanksgiving meal. Don't forget it.
All right, fellas, birds down. Uh, we have the ice bags atop the breast we just took off. And the reason we did this is to really level set out the cooking time and temp. These uh, dark meat legs of this bird uh, in the wings are gonna take just a little bit longer to cook than the lighter white meat in the breasts. So this juncture, let's season this bad boy up. So right here, we have a little bit of olive oil. We're just gonna get this olive oil over the exterior of the bird. We're gonna get really from head to tail and toe on this bad boy. And then next in is our seasoning rub. So Adam, Tim, you guys wanna take on this here? I'll get in there. There we go. Let's pop up in. I'm gonna need somebody with some gloves to, no, to rub. Good. But there we go. So we're actually, we're gonna keep the seasoning really light atop. We're not gonna rub a ton. We're gonna start out with a rub just to get that olive oil over the top. But once this is well spread out, there you go. That's exactly it. We're gonna hit this up and remember, we have an injection that's on the way. We also have a little bit of a base that's gonna follow. And the really cool part about this cook is, uh, we're gonna be layering flavor upon flavor upon flavor. So we have our rub that goes across the exterior. We're then gonna repurpose this rub inside of the injection and then also in the base. Flavor, 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 okay? So while we finish up seasoning out this bird here, uh, why don't we get the injection moving? And if we could, um, let's grab that chicken stock, let's grab some of the bourbon, uh, and we'll also use some olive oil in this, okay? okay? All right, go ahead. Uh, Brendan, I'm gonna trade you spots, man. Uh, why don't you grab out our uh, turkey stock right up front, and then let's get a little bit of olive oil in, if we could. How much do you want? You know, this stuff's measure good. Measure with your heart. Yeah, measure with your heart, man. There you go. Maybe a little more heart. <laughs> more heart? <laughs> there we go, good. I'll give okay. you my whole heart. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, it's Thanksgiving. This is, this is a great time. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of bourbon in here. So why don't we go with about an ounce and a half, maybe two ounces. Save enough for us to keep our bellies warm. That's one more. There you go, good. Okay, cool, really good. So now next, this is the same exact rub, guys, that we had used on the exterior of the bird. And the only thing that I took out, though, was the pepper. You guys know why? No. No, okay. So the reason we took the pepper out is, frankly, the granules of pepper, they won't make it actually through the injector needle. So it jams the whole thing up. Uh, so we just remove the pepper, we ground this down to a really fine powder, and then we just drop it right here into our seasoning. Now we have plenty of brown sugar in here, uh, white sugar, uh, smoky paprika, uh, some cayenne powder. Uh, we have a little bit of chili powder, um, roasted granulated garlic, really good stuff. So um, there we go. Just give that bad boy a little bit of a stir. And then uh, we'll inject this now into the legs, into the breast, into the wings, and then onto the smoker. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> this is the process. When we drop this down, move this about here. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna drop in here and uh, supposing everything works as it should. Oh, there we go. Good, because everything's frozen and we're cooking, it's like 23 degrees outside, right? Okay, so for this injection, I think there's two ways to go about this. We've had this bird sitting out and the reason we've done this is to develop a little bit of tack, extract more moisture from the skin of that bird. If we want a really nice crust on the bird, we gotta let it sit out before it cooks. So I'm actually gonna come from underneath the bird for the injection and go directly into the breasts. And now the intent of this is that we build flavor from the inside and out. All right, and there we go, get in there. There we go. Man, this bird's tight. There we go, go ahead, injection, get in there. There we go. Nice, okay, good. Now we're gonna go in from each end on this that bird right there, top and bottom. Cool. We'll break some skin there if we have to. What do you think, man? That sounded really good. <laughs> it sounded really good. Liar. <laughs> you liar. That sounded terrible. They can hear it, you know. All right, here we go. It's okay. It's dead. There we go. Okay. No, so the viewers aren't dead. Yeah, the bird is dead. The viewers aren't. The bird can. The bird definitely can't hear it at this juncture, but the viewers can. There we go. All right, so uh, we're gonna go two points of injection: one through the bottom of the breast, one through the top. Same thing over here, and in in this combination of both uh, the injection 
combination of the seasoning, the way we're smoking over indirect heat, we've also allowed this to come outside to room temperature per se. Well, room temperature here is not that warm. So one of the things that I'll recommend to folks uh, to have a more juicy bird is let this turkey sit and let it sit for two to three hours to elevate up to room temperature. So it is cold out today, we have a beautiful day, but the less time this bird is in the smoker, the more juicy that bird is, right? So if I'm trying to take this bird from 40 degrees in the refrigerator up to 165, that's a long cook time. But if I can get this out 55, 60 degrees and then get it in the smoker, I'm probably cutting about an hour off the time it takes to cook, so. This is a really cool way to add a fair bit of smoke into the stuffing and check this out. Listen to the sound of this. That's what we're looking for. Okay, we're gonna start a little bit of olive oil inside the pan and we're using the olive oil in combination with the butter. Olive oil for its health benefits, butter for its flavor, or olive oil for its flavor, butter for its health benefits, no one really knows. But I'll tell you, this combination totally works. So let's start out with the olive oil into the pan, get a really nice base coating, base and coating of uh, some fats, perfect. And then drop in the butter. There we go. And that's exactly, oh, perfect, yep. About half of that's good. And this is exactly what we're looking for. So when the butter goes in, we want a little bit of that bubbling, that simmering, that frothing. And we're next gonna drop in our mirepoix. And now mirepoix is just a nice combination of this celery, red onion, and carrot right into the pan. We're gonna get this really nice caramelized down tons of flavor, and if you could actually even hit it up for me with a little bit of the salt and pepper, that'd be great. We don't need a ton at this stage, because we have, in addition to this, we have the stock, we have the pecans that already been salted and toasted. This really is just about building some base of flavor at this juncture. Okay, there we go, just a nice little stir. Stay pretty consistent. There we go. And we know this is gonna be finished in somewhere about seven to 10 minutes max. We're gonna drop the lid on this bad boy, pull out, extract some of the moisture, develop some color in here. And then next, we're gonna go in with the bread, our aromatics, pecans, dry cherries. This thing's gonna be good. This is how you build a real stuffing. what we're looking for. Check that out. We have this beautiful golden caramelized crust to top the stuffing. We're still just a little bit tender, soft on the inside, but that egg is cooked through. There's so much flavor in there. It's gonna be amazing with the turkey.
All right. <laughs> Ready dropping ingredients? Yeah. It's that kind of day. It's that kind of day. It's that kind of day. All right. Our potatoes are just finishing up. We have about five minutes left on the bird until we're going to pull it. So let's go in with the garlic if we could. I'm going to back into that with a little bit of our chopped green onion. And then let's go in with our heavy cream first. We're going to build up a really nice base. There we go. Cover those taters. Heavy cream, about two cups. Finish up in. This is a little bit of previously warmed cream cheese. <laughs> there we go. And then we have our butter. <clears throat> All right. We'll polish this up uh, with a little bit of salt and pepper. So we're gonna season a little bit, not too much though, because we had salt and water, we prepared the potatoes in. So check this out. We're just gonna go in here with a masher and we're gonna do what mashers do. We're just gonna mash. Chef smash. There we go. Get it all in nice and nice and smashed. So we leave the skin on when we do mashed potatoes. It's actually my favorite. I think it adds a really nice uh, touch and some cool texture. I like that rustic mashed potato. Now we over prepared the potato until it was ultra tender and then folded in all that beautiful, rich, unsalted butter, salt, pepper, roasted, minced garlic, heavy cream. But the key in this is we used and maintained inside the pot just a little bit of the boiling liquid. So boiling liquid is key. Maintain just a little bit for your mashed potatoes. A quick behind the scenes take on dressing up presentation for your turkey. Just grab a pile of fresh herbs. You're gonna use things like sage, rosemary, marjoram, thyme, oregano. All of them are incredibly beautiful, super fragrant. Uh, and then just intermittently intersperse them <laughs> together. We've had enough bourbon today. Just watch, don't listen to what I'm saying. Check this out. You guys, this has been such an incredible day. To me, this is really what Thanksgiving is all about, right? It's about family, it's about friends, it's the way that fire and great food bring people together. Um, we have an incredible turkey, we have an amazing stuffing and cream mashed potato. This has truly been a sun up to sundown cook. So uh, we have a lot of people waiting to get fed inside. Uh, so we cut into this bird and, uh, and see how we did, huh? Let's do it. All right, here we go. All right, first, we're gonna start up, look at the color on top of that breast, and we're just gonna go right, oh, do you see that? You hear the skin? There's the front. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that. That is gonna be so dang juicy. Now we're gonna come across the side. Oh, whoa. Look at that. Nice little tenderloin right there on the inside. Here we go. Now I'm gonna move across, cut through that skin. You guys hear that skin? How it crunches right along the way? Here we go. And I'm gonna move around. We're gonna cut across. We're gonna lop off that breast. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> It doesn't get any better in any or juice in any or juicier in any juicier than that. Look how juicy that is. <laughs> All right, let's slice into this bad boy. Do we get an extra cutting board? How about we do this? Let's grab the mashed potatoes off. I'm gonna slice into this. When we start working on some bites, here we go. There we go. Bites in. Look how incredibly juicy that bird is. I'll tell you guys, with that Primo, 
it's just like it maintains its heat. And because that ceramic maintains the heat throughout the course of that cook, is we're lifting that bird up, right? As we're lifting up that grill to check on the bird, it's not like we're losing that heat in the grill. So when you typically lift up a grill lid, uh, you're losing that heat, you're reapplying heat, and you have this really kind of crazy bit of tension you apply into the protein. Look at how juicy this is. Look at this. Look at that right now, how tender that is. It literally is falling apart in our hands. That, my friends, is how Thanksgiving turkey is done. So, fellas, we carve up some bites. I certainly got enough turkey for all of us. Grab a spoon, grab a fork. I think the job here on this turkey is well done. Uh, so, we'll dig in, man. Here we go. Thanksgiving yeah. sow, huh? Yeah. Here we go. There we go. Be judicious with those bites too. We got some. We got some family inside ready to eat. They didn't, they didn't cook all those. So Why no? Exactly. <laughs> there we go. Dig in. Where'd our where'd our mashed potatoes go? We gotta get some mashed potatoes too, huh? I got the gloves on still. Whoa! Oh, Tell me that isn't you get that smokiness, a little bit of salinity on the inside from that injection, right? The exterior is so nice and beautiful. That's ridiculous. That's probably one of the juiciest turkeys I've ever had in my life. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, amazing. And that's the breast meat. You know what I'm saying? That's incredible. All right, here we go. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely going back to the bird before we're done. Let's get into some taters and get into stuffing. Here we go. Dig in, fellas. What do you think? Do you know those mashed potatoes? Tell me that is not ridiculously good. Probably the best I've ever had. Really? Yeah, totally. When you get in there, you get that creaminess from that heavy cream, the butter, a little bit of salinity. Yeah, the garlic goes in so good. I feel like I'm missing out though if I don't have something on the stuffing. To me, like a really good stuffing, you get some of that caramelization and that crust, right? But you still get that, that softness on the inside that we all love about stuffing. By the way, is it stuffing or dressing if it's not stuffed? Do we know? I think officially it's uh, dressing, but uh, you know what else is good for? As long as it tastes good, so I don't think anybody cares. No, no one does. Well, my friends, like I said on the front end, to me, this is really what family and outdoor cooking is entirely about. Thank you so much for today. My friends, this has been Thanksgiving over live fire. Stay hungry. All right, fellas, Thanksgiving bird, we're out here atop the current river. Uh, to me, Thanksgiving is all about what great food, fire. Uh, what else is Thanksgiving about, Alex? Being thankful. Being thankful. For the people around you. Okay, that's good. And in your life. We should trade spots. <laughs> <laughs> no. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. Yeah, more attention. <laughs> less adventure, less filming, less cooking. More attention to the dog. <laughs> Let's grab our bird. Ha, ha, ha.